Welcome back, everyone. 841 this morning, and we are asking the attorney your legal questions. Attorney Twilly here with me this morning, and want to get right to the question. This coming to us from Ralph M., who says, I was in my yard doing some spring cleaning when a neighbor's dog attacked my dog. It was so vicious that my dog's leg eventually had to be amputated. I was also bitten while breaking up the fight, injuring my wrist. What are my legal options to your what should I do? Uh, people get emotional and do whatever they can for their dogs. Yes, and as we were just talking about offset, you know, I have three dogs of yep. my own, so I'm very sensitive to the matter. But, um, and that sounds like a horrific dog attack, by the way. Um, but your legal options, fortunately here in Connecticut, we, the law that we have, the dog bite laws that we have, are really sort of, uh, they make it easier for victims like Ralph um, to make a claim. You know, typically when you have a, a claim, an injury claim, whether it's from falling down or from a car accident, you have to prove that the other side was negligence. But in Connecticut, with our dog bite statute, it's a strict liability statute. So you just have to basically prove that, you know, somebody was the owner or keeper of a dog and that the dog harmed you. You don't have to prove negligence. So that, that makes it easier for victims. But, um, you know, <clears throat> if you know who the owner of the dog is, that makes it easier. But I, I guess running it back, first thing, report it, right? Yep. Report it to the local police department, uh, local animal control officer, so there's documentation of the injury because you're going to want to have that um, when you start to bring a claim. And, and that's the next part, right? So how do you actually recover? Um, typically, we do that through a homeowner's insurance policy okay. or a renter's policy. I mean, you can bring a claim against somebody individually and try and you know, uh, be compensated from them, but typically it's through a homeowner's insurance policy. Um, one of the things that is going to help Ralph here is, listen, you know, his dog was injured too, right? So in Connecticut, you're liable for the injuries or damages that you cause to a person or their property. And in Connecticut, dogs are considered property. So you would be able to actually recover for veterinarian bills, your medical bills, um, you know, any out-of-pocket expenses you might have. I remember about a year ago, uh, I was here and I was having a conversation with, I believe, Tim. Yep. And um, we were talking, it was, a, it was a dog bite question. And shortly thereafter, the Heyman Law Firm started to receive, you know, quite a few calls about that. And um, I remember going out and meeting with a, a, a guy who was attacked by a pit bull mix. And, um, you know, he had concerns because it was his neighbor and he didn't want to bring a claim. And, and um, you know, they're, they're concerned about the relationship. But it's one of those things that's typically handled behind the scenes. And so it doesn't usually affect the neighbor directly. And that's what you have insurance for, right? So, you know, I would encourage other people, because I know this happens, because yes. I've talked to a lot of people, and they're like, oh, it's my neighbor, I don't really want to, you know, rock that boat a little bit, but it's, it's, it's pretty sterile. Um, there's not a lot that, that happens between yourself and the neighbors, generally between yourself and their insurance company, and it's... I don't think it's something that would really cause a rift. Some important information here. People always asking questions about their animals and their pets. We appreciate your stopping by. We should let folks know, too, if they have questions, send them our way. We'll do our best to share them, and we wish you a great day. Great. And you as well. It was nice to meet you. Yeah, good to see you.